and opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We slicing cake. We slicing cake. We slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We slicing. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Chamber Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Dave from L.A., coming to you live from FEMA region number six. Today is May the 17th, 2017. It is a Wednesday. It is a wise Wednesday. The, the uh, brother and sister Davis are in queue, all ready to go. I just want to thank you all for being a part of today's show. And before we get going, let me just say this. Um, tomorrow and Friday we'll, won't be on air because um, tomorrow is my birthday, so I didn't know... Uh, uh, there were some plans that some surprise plans, so we're going to be uh, doing some surprise things, which is all good. So uh, tomorrow won't be on. Uh, it's a uh, born day for little old me, but um, so we're going to, the family has some things planned out uh, here, uh, so we're going to be doing some things here. So uh, won't be able to be on the show tomorrow. Um, and um, Friday, I don't think that uh, we'll be able to as well. So just want to give you all a heads up. But before we get going, let's continue to support Black Talk Radio Network by going to www.blacktalkradionetwork.com, www.blacktalkradionetwork.com. Go to the uh, homepage, and on the homepage, you'll see the donation prop that's right there on the right. Give some of your financial en- energy because this network does not uh, get any sponsors from any corporate sponsors or any commercial sponsors. It's you that uh, that are making this all possible. And but what it needs is that it's going to need uh, your support in order for that to be done. So give some of your financial energy to the network. All donations are, cr- are greatly appreciated, regardless of how big or how small they are. Also, Black Talk Radio Network has established a social media outlet that will also support this network. For only $24 a year, you can be part of the uh, BTR community. It's right there on the home page, or it's, you can reach it at www.btrcommunity.com, www.btrcommunity.com. And it's a social media network where you can engage in all your social media activities without being adversely affected, without your identity being uh, spidered into other people and cross-triangulated. And also uh, data mine and your your information won't be uh, seen by other people that want to, to get information about you to make different decisions that you know, many people have lost uh, other opportunities, employment, and, and all forms of things because of uh, their Facebook. And what I want to say, one thing I would say about Facebook, you know, if you don't know people personally, don't post what you think or, or don't, don't post on somebody else's page uh, because that, that actually is, it, it gives it kind of a representation of that individual, and, and that may not be the way that individual resonates, and that may not be the way that that individual uh, sees things. So be, don't post on somebody else's page. That's, you know, w- without fully uh, uh, 
talking to them and asking them. The proper thing is to really to ask them, is this okay if I post this on your page? That's the proper thing because, you know, all is fun and, and, and cool when, when, when we do it to other people, or when other people do it to us, we get upset. So uh, I would really say don't post on people's page uh, that, that you didn't ask them if you could post different things on there because, you know, they, they, they may not, you know, want to resonate that way, or uh, they may have a strategic reason why things you don't know. You, you're, you're posting because there's something that you like, and it could be adversely affecting uh, someone else. So uh, uh, don't do that. Um, just, you know, be mindful. Have, have some, some real etiquette in, in, in about, uh, especially, you know, for, for what, what's going on in today's world, okay? So just wanted to say that. Also... Uh, within BTR community um, is the only place that I post and you don't have to worry about uh, you know uh, that type of thing because you're not going to be adversely affected here uh, but I think there's always still a prudence in everything that we should do um, you know very very important so definitely make sure that you come on over to BTR community and check out it's the only place that I post and it supports the network also if you would like to acquire precious metals you can go to our Precious Metals Business, and that's www.prosperitymint.com, www.prosperitymint.com. Check out what's there in inventory. Then, then email info at prosperitymint.com, info at prosperitymint.com before you make any purchase so uh, someone can walk you through the process to make sure you're doing it correctly, purchasing correctly. Make sure that you do that. So uh, make sure you do that. And you, that way you can save as a lady and a gentleman or as a king and a queen. You don't have to save as the way that uh, everyone that I know and you know probably is being paid in as a debt instrument, which is a wage of a slave. So come on over to Prosperity Mint. Check out what's there and uh, start getting your overall physical, tangible uh, assets that the great creator had made for a reason, and all of those intrinsical assets are still in them, undeniable. So check that out. Also, uh, we're going to be, t uh, tonight we will have another one of the uh, preparedness classes. Make sure you actually, uh, for those of you that have um, uh, made payment arrangements and, and everything else, uh, we'll be right after tonight, uh, after Tando Radio Show, we will jump right into that. So that's what we're going to be doing right after Tando. And I'm going to have to, uh, right after I get Brother Davis logged in, I'm going to have to jump in and, and take care of uh, one individual that missed the class. So uh, I won't be on the board. i got to make sure. Uh, let me make sure I'm on here. Is, uh, Scotty, how's my sound? You had a, a, a text in from loud someone that said my man. sound was bad. You coming in loud and clear? Okay, all right. But uh, thank you uh, for the individual that sent the, the message. So let me let me check and make sure that we're good. But uh, says that we're. Let me see what's going on here. Scotty says we're loud and clear. So um, so we're still good, Scotty. Yeah. Brother Davis, are we still good? You hear me really well? Yeah, you're coming across fine. Pretty clear. One more time, uh, Brother Davis, Brother Bragg, can you hear me? Yeah, you're pretty yeah. clear over here. Yeah, okay. you're pretty clear okay. over here, too, man. Okay, thank you. Um, just got it. Uh, thank you, Brother, Brother Davis. Okay, so with that being said, um, I guess um, this one got a, a new system, so it may be something that's messing up for the other individual because I never had this problem um, because... Uh, this is a new new mic, so I will check this and make sure that it's not uh, messing up. So, okay. So I will, hey, I will said, let, let you know. <laughs> I'm the, I'm not the audio uh -huh. engineer for nothing. You know, um, I appreciate people do letting us know, but sometimes the problem is on their end, and if they're on the page, okay. if they refresh the page. But I'm always monitoring, you know, the different platforms we broadcast into. So you're coming. I would have been said something if I couldn't hear you. So you you loud and clear, Dave. Okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Scotty. Um, 
All right, so with that being said, we're going to jump into, what the, where was that left? Okay, so um, yeah, we're going to have the Precious Metals. Also, on July the 1st of 2017, here in Dallas, we're going to be uh, hosting let me just pull this up so we can give you all of the correct information. Control Your Wealth, uh, Control, Control Your Wealth Seminar is going to be here. Um, we're going to be giving the, I'm going to be giving a portion of the Precious Metals class. Um, there's also going to be, um, Trust and Foundations will be covered there. How to leverage that going forward in the future and why it's so important. And we're going to be able to have some, spend some time there. You can go to the Eventbrite, uh, uh, page for that is is actually posted inside of Tando Radio Show, and it is uh, three hundred dollars. It's is three hundred dollars per person. For couples, it's five fifty for couples. Um, and at this seminar, you will be giving the, be get, you will be given the precious metals class, a portion of the precious metals class, a very very important part of it. And if you wanted to continue the precious metals class, which I know for those that that do, um, many think that they don't, they really don't need the precious metals class. But what we teach is is unlike anything else that's taught uh, in, at all by anyone. No no one teaches what we're, what we're showing is, and it's to your advantage. I want to show you how to use your medals and to get uh, interest off of it. Very, very important. And also, uh, trust and foundations, how, why, how and why that's so important, and uh, properly positioning yourself. You know, whenever you hear that wealthy individual say that they've given donations of this and that, they haven't given one dime. And that you need to really know how that works and, and, and use that to yourself and your family's benefit. Many people, I remember when Dr. Dre gave a bunch of money to USC, everybody was upset at Dr. Dre, and I kind of laughed because the people that were upset, they, they were upset because they they were naive to what, what was really happening. And it was the best thing that, that, that Dre did because he was really just giving uh, to himself, and most people don't know how that works. So that's definitely something that's very, very important, and you need to know so that you can engage in this. And there's a reason why uh, celebrity figurehead Donald Trump hasn't released his taxes, because uh, he doesn't have to. Doesn't have to at all. So, and there's reasons why. So, that's uh, some of the things that's going to be covered. Very, very important. That's going to be July the 1st. Um, and it's going to be here in Dallas. And you can go to the uh, Eventbrite for Controlling Your Wealth Seminar. All of the information is there. It's going to be held at the Dallas Library. So, And we're going to set up the platform for it to be, um, I guess we're, we're going to have uh, not a webinar, but uh, we're going to try to stream it as well. So I'll give you information about that as well. So oh, Dave. You, come on down to Dallas. Uh, start this very very important especially for what's going on um, I, I will be giving some very very uh, important instructions as to what's going on in the world and how uh, we should be looking at it so that you can do what's in your best interest your family best interest and our community's best interest so and not only that it will be a place where we can start to assemble ourselves collectively so that there are so that we can momentumize the future and the opportunities that will come along. So that's where we will definitely, definitely uh, will 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 be looking forward to that. So something that um, Prosperity Mint is going to be uh, uh, hosting and featuring. Um, we will. I will be actually, you know, doing this seminar is actually our seminar, um, and some very, very great individuals will be a part of this whole thing. So, I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of you. Uh, coming down July the first in Dallas, and it's uh, all there on the Eventbrite or going to press into uh, the BTR community, and it's posted there. Or you can go to uh, on Facebook. You can check out uh, my web webpage for uh, David Wren uh, there on Facebook. It's it's there as well. So it's the last thing, only thing I don't really post in there. So let's get into what's in the news. Next article from Sputnik News. Looking Dave, into can my you hear eyes. me, Dave? Major U.S. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I had a question, man, before you get started, because it's, it's just something that I'm really starting to be burdened by, and I'm trying to address, and I call it fake news in the black community. 
And but you said something about Donald uh, Trump not releasing his taxes, and you said he don't have to. Why doesn't he have to? Didn't all the other past presidents release their taxes? Yeah, yeah, they they did because um, because the way that they were structured. Um, the reason why he doesn't have to is probably because the way that he's legally structured. Well, wait and because a of that, he doesn't. Wait a minute. Is there some law in the United States Constitution that says when you run for president, you have to release your taxes? No. Okay. So just because somebody else did something, and it's not that I'm trying to protect this celebrity figurehead, but I'm just trying to get our people to think because I keep hearing people bringing that up. Why don't he release his taxes? Well, you gave the answer. He don't have to. That's the answer. There's no law. I don't care what another monkey did. You know what I'm saying? Does that mean right, I'm going right, to do right, it too? Right, 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 right. And, and that's so true. Um, and that, you know, people do that for political reasons. Right. Um, that they do that to show, you know, that, that you know they're trying to show this and trying to show that. Uh, but no, that's not a requirement. Uh, for the celebrity figurehead to be chosen as a fle- celebrity figurehead uh, as CEO of the corporate corporate of the United States, and actually, um, I would suggest all of you to re- to restructure your overall uh, tax holding so that you won't be burdened by many other exactly, things. Exactly. So that's one of the things that we definitely, definitely do, um, and, and this is very, very vital in how you, how this plays out, um, and because uh, if you're structured legally correctly. There's so many things that you are uh, actually immune from. Um, now, and so Dave, that sh- you should be taking full advantage of that. Now, but speaking most of what of us you're don't saying, know it, so we don't engage in it. Yeah, ahead, speaking say, I, of what you're saying, they did leak his last uh, set of taxes, and it showed, mm-hmm. and it showed the uh, tremendous um, write-off or 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 is gay the reason saying that he lost so much money that he don't have to pay taxes again this man ain't in the same tax bracket as us and he ain't filling out no, no. 1040 easy form and and so no. and so he's taking advantage of the rules of the regulations concerning taxes so that it benefits him to the best of of you know his tax advisor's of, of ability mm-hmm. and i've heard people say well, it's patriotic to pay taxes. Well, you know, I don't know what to say to you except for um, the, the majority of the wealthy people don't pay taxes. They pay little taxes as possible. So why would you want to shoulder the burden? And, and, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it this way. Exactly, Scotty. I'm going to put it this way. Wealth whispers while poverty screams. Wealth, wealth whispers. Well, what I mean by wealth whispers is that it does a lot of things in order to grow its overall wealth beyond the individual that is the caretaker of that. It's it's a measure of moving forward, and so you know what, what a lot of people will do is they're going to take advantage of what's there that they can do, and actually. It is a wise thing. It's something that we all should be doing. Because if you really, really think about it, no one should be paying taxes. And it was how it, it really came about. And we're going to have to do a show on that, uh, bring in some tax people, some real honest tax people that will tell you the history about it, what it, what it all involved and in, delved in. And it's not something, you know, you, you, we should not be bragging and we should not be bolstering about something that is that where we're getting taken advantage of. It's one of those things like Harriet Tubman. I freed many of slaves, but I would have freed many more if they only known that they had that they were slaves. That is the best way to put it. So we we want to um, definitely definitely uh, be mindful of that. So excuse me. You know, so let's come on down to, to Dallas, and it will make all the sense in the world. And you'll see. No longer will you be mad at at, at him or anybody else. And like like I was saying with Doc, Dr. Dre, a lot of people didn't realize what Dr. Dre was doing. It was the smartest thing that he could do because of what it gained him, and it was a reason why he picked that that one institution. So 
was was very very wise. Uh, people, you know, aren't aren't aware of it, but we want to break that cycle so that you can uh, position yourself and your family for the future. Okay, so let's jump into what's in the news. Let me just pull it up here. And what's in the news? Uh, next article comes from uh, Sputnik News. You, uh, the Ukraine likely to seize uh, Gestapo's assets to uh, gas uh, gas farms. Excuse me, gas farms assets to pressure uh, Russia. Very very important uh, because this whole that has a lot of that's what's going to start happening everywhere. Countries are going to seize the infrastructure of other countries' uh, uh, businesses and, and assets that are in their country. Why would you say, so what? Well, Mexico is going to do that to the United States, and U.S. is going to be doing that to other countries. This is, this is the, the, the squeeze that's about to happen, ladies and gentlemen. Next article from South Sea of China. I mean, excuse me, South China Morning Post. Singapore Wealth Fund, GIC, sells UPS stakes at a loss. The economic uh, circle, ladies and gentlemen, is getting very, very tight. Next article from the New York Times. Comey Memo says, asked Trump, uh, excuse me, Comey Memo says Trump asked him to end Flint, uh, Flynn's uh, investigation. So check out that article. Next one from the Rutherford. Posted this one, the Rutherford Institution. America's reign of terror. A nation reaps what it sows. Check out that article. Really good one. Next one. This one came from, where did this one come? Deadline. Uh, dot com. Hackers holding Disney's latest pirate of the Caribbean for ransom. Next article comes from the Jerusalem Post. Israel ministers call, minister calls for assassination of Syria's Assad. Next article from uh, this one comes from uh, Charles uh, Hugh Smith. State of denial: the economy no longer works as works as it did in the past. So so true. Check out that article. This one comes from Zero Point. Shock shocker. Down futures down over a hundred points. On impeachment talk and Russian intel controversy it went down 375 points today, but there's so much more to this whole thing. Um, the purge, ladies and gentlemen, this is the purge that we're going to be seeing. Next article come from Zero Point Bombshell. Uh, Seth Rich was was in contact with WikiLeaks, says former DC homicide detective, and that was the uh, the uh, DNC individual uh, that was probably a part of some of the leaks that was uh, actually murdered. Um, so you put it all together, you can kind of see where it came from. Next one from Cerebrally uh, Naive Network, a.k.a. CNN. Yates, there's nothing casual about this, talking about what's going on with the uh, whole or ordeal. And this is a diversion from what's really happening, ladies and gentlemen. Next article, major, major one, in my opinion. Uh, uh, this comes from the Associated Press, and it is uh, the latest on a report that Donald Trump shared classified information with the Russians um, and a senior European official tells, listen to this, a senior European official tells the AP, that his country might stop sharing information with the U.S. if confirmed. This is the purge, ladies and gentlemen, continuing, and we've been talk we talked about that. We're going to have to revisit that. Next uh, article from Anti-Media. Uh, uh, political road rage. Women ran congressmen off road over health care vote. Check out that article. Next article, and the last one that we got there from Bloomberg, U.S. state officials says measurements of GDP inflation are off, meaning the economy is in shambles. So definitely that is the case. So we're going to uh, go ahead and jump to Brother Davis and Sister Davis for Wise Wednesday. Uh, very, very important. Make sure if you'd like to get in on the conversation, give Brother Davis or Sister Davis a call at 866-510-9025. 866-510-9025. Hit star star so that they can, um, so that you can unmute yourself and just, uh, because I won't be on the board. i got to set up some other things. Um, so if you would, just say excuse me if you have a question for Brother or uh, Sister Davis, and uh, so that they can know that you have a question or comment. So give them a call, 866-510-9025. Uh, once I get everything uh, resituated, I'll be back on um, and 
So looking forward to today's show with Brother Davis and Sister Davis, because I believe Sister Davis has said uh, she was going to be chiming in as well. So let's get to uh, Wise Wednesday with Brother Davis. Brother Davis, thank you, thank you for you being you and Sister Davis being her, the king and queen of All good, brother. this nation, and I appreciate you so much. So looking forward to another show, another Wise Wednesday from our great counsel and our great friend, Brother Davis and Sister Davis. Once again, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to allow me to come into your homes and give you some insights and understanding of things that may or may not allow you to be who you are. Now, why do I say may or may not? Because literally, a lot of the understandings that we're taught through Westernism are taught to subdue us so that we're not focused on the things that are best for us. Now, a lot of times we find ourselves reading, you hear this here, uh, fake news and all of that, and you really don't know what to believe. Well, there are some things out here that are put in place so that you are always in the dark. But when you start putting these concepts of what you've learned to what you understand, you begin to put the picture together so your clarity or your vision becomes more clear. Tonight's show uh, is going to be on the intro aspect of the introverse. Now, the reason why I say the introspect of the introverse is because it is one of the many universes that are involved in the, what's called the multiverse concept. Now, why do I say I'm dealing with the self first? You see, let me give you a little background so I can lay some of this information in order. As we go along, you'll be able to understand more clearly what it, what it, what, why it's designed that way. You see, when we were uh, first come to the Earth, and we first started to migrate, and we first started to uh, have what's called civilization, there had to be laws put in place. Well, these laws that were put in place are nothing like the laws that you see today. The laws that were put in place were to help you become more full in your life of, as a human or humanity. Okay? So now we're you were taught A, B, C's, and one, two, threes in Westernism. That isn't how you were taught then. You were taught through example. So if your father or mother got up, and the first thing they did was something, this is something basic, like drink a glass of water, then that became a part of your routine. And as you begin to get older, they exposed to you why they drink that glass of water in the morning. And then you began to take on the identity of the culture in which you live. But here's what's so unique about then from now. They lived in a world that was designed that every action required an equal and positive, and understand how I said that, an equal and positive reaction. Today's world, every action is an equal action. Why? It's because if it's negative action, you're going to get an equal negative action. And if it's an action that is a contrary, what is a contrary action? A contrary action may be the destruction of something. It may be the destruction of the land. It may be the destruction of a home. Well, that still creates karma because you don't see it return to you immediately. Westernism teaches you not to focus on it. But in reality, what you have done is you have created in the universe a action that requires a reaction. This is a universal law of karma. Now, there are many universal laws. Uh, there's the universal law of what you call faith. Okay? But faith wasn't designed to be outside of you. Faith was designed to be inside and why? It's because if you believe that you could do something and you incorporate it with your daily action, then on the course of you attaining what it is you're trying to do, you grew from the instances that occurred during that process. All right? So, for those of you who do not know, sickness was not a major problem then. Why? 
because they were taught as they were growing up that they could go into different states of metamistic practice and heal their cells. He'll go into their body, find a problem, and heal it. Now, some of you might say, well, that's pretty deep, but see, it's already been known that different states of metamistic action literally can change your life. Some people use it to be successful in the external world. So when I say an external world, I mean if they go to work every day or if they go to school, whatever, they use it as a tool to perpetuate where they are in reference to the frame of mind of what they're trying to achieve. Matter of fact, uh, Richard uh, Russell Simmons just wrote a book called The Power of Meditation and Achievement. And the reason why is because he began to understand that in the universe, every action as a reaction, and you can literally create the actions that bring you the reactions that will fortify the pace that you're on to what you're trying to achieve. You see, a lot of times we do things without thinking, and that's exactly what Westernism wants. Because when you do things without thinking, you're not re required by Westernism to look and see what the ripple effect of your action is. And the sad part about it is a lot of us have been so engulfed into the system we have it. We have to teach ourselves to work for ourselves in our behavior patterns. Perfect example is your habits. You know, people have bad habits and they have good habits. Well, good habits give you good results. Bad habits give you bad results. Westernism perpetuates uh, they perpetuate habits to be something that you literally can't break on your own. But you started them on your own. So you should logically understand that if you started them on your own, you can break them. You just have to find the pattern to break that you use to break them with. Now, how does this reflect directly on the individual with metamistic training in them of themselves in order for them to be able to enhance the quality of life, the type of person that they are, their offspring. Because literally the things that you learn, you can teach. And you see that's the most important part about learning everything, anything. You can teach it. Let me be very clear about knowledge. Knowledge is just the accumulation of data. So a lot of people have the accumulation of data. They're very knowledgeable. But wisdom is applying that data so that it becomes a part of the foundation of your fortitude to achieve what it is you seek. So a lot of people walk around about how smart they are, what they could do, but what are they doing? You see, whenever we do something, when uh, life began, the purpose of what was done was explained to the child. Remember what I told you about the glass of water? Well, when the, when the child said to the mother, you know, I've been watching you every day as a child, you would get up and you would have water. And the mother would look and say, well, you know, as a child, when I breastfeed it, the water was a one way I regenerated milk in my body. And the child said, hmm, okay, because you have to understand we're growing on our stage. But what she didn't go in to tell the child is that the water is actually a stream of life that every living thing can, must tap into. And the reason why it must tap into it is because it's what's called a necessity. Every living thing has a necessity for certain things, and most of them have a necessity for water. Now, some would require more water than others, but they still require water. And see, we as human beings... We require something that we've gotten so far away from that when I tell you it's so simplistic, but when you look at your life, you can see where you applied it and when you have it because it's so soft and focused. And that is virtue. You see, with virtue, we can make the changes in our life and then evaluate those changes on a basis so that you could see how the continuum has made you focused on what you're trying to achieve. Why? Because your virtue it becomes a part of that process. So now I'll give you an example. When I first started meditating, I meditated every day at the same time of day for a month, month and a half. 
Why? Because the time availed me, one, and two, it made me obedient to the practice itself. So I was attaining a virtuous concept over trying to gain a greater knowledge of myself through a basic practice that I was really in the beginning dabbling with. But as I began to really get into stages of meditation, things were being bought to me. Books were being bought to me. People were being bought to me. These things were all the reaction to my action. And see, the reason why I'm pointing that out is because a lot of times in Westernism, they don't want you to see the reaction to their action. Not a perfect example. I talked to several people over the course of this week, and they talked about how warm it is. Well, the reason why it's so warm is that there is a disrupt a disruptance in the universe in the area of climate, and these uh, the multiverse and these disruptions have a reaction, and the reaction is that there may be less of one thing and more of another. So in the case of the climate, you got the ice polar caps are melting and the oceans are rising and the wind which really have a sequence of flow around the earth has been altered. And the reason being is because we as a as the human race have allowed a segment of us to be able to have a greater control over resources that they deem are necessary for us to have. Now, they're doing that for a reason, too. So you have to understand that in this action and reaction, that a lot of times the reaction that is going to come may be more severe or not as severe, but it's going to come. And the reason why it's going to come is because it's a universal law. Like I had told you about faith. Faith is a principle, a universal principle. But it was not designed to be an external principle. It was designed to be an internal principle. That's why your body has what's called auto mode, in which you go to sleep at night, and it still functions. A lot of why it functions is based on the faith that you have that it will. And you know there's days where you're not feeling very well, then you know you, you might be a little sick and you wonder, oh, wow, if I go to sleep, well, would I feel better? You don't realize, because we haven't been taught, that you have some control over that. And that when you apply yourself in this multi-universe, you can tap into the, cosmolo the cosmology that will help your circumstance if you apply yourself in a manner that which you're Actions will be a service to the world, not just yourself. Now, what is a service to the world? Well, you see in the religions, they talk about what you have done for the least, you have done for me. But that's a principle. You see, universal principles are tools that anyone can apply and receive a positive result. It's just that in that specific incident, it's used to a religious concept, but it does not have to be religious. I'm quite sure you've heard, if you listen to my show, you've heard me tell I carry water around, uh, cold water for those people who I see that I don't have the resources to give, but I can give them something, so I give them something that will give them life, because it, I'm creating an action that will bring that same action back to me, even if it's just cold water, my body and how I fit in the universe will benefit. And you see, we're all plants of certain calories. Now, when I say plants of certain calories, we need everything a plant needs. But we're a different kind of plant. Because we have consciousness, we can literally think. Plants have a process, and they stick to that process. And that's what they're designed to do. But yet, if you watch a plant over a two-year period, you will see its process of what is called death and resurrection. Death and resurrection. And there is a spiritual principle, there is a uh, multiverse principle that is alive 
in just that concept. You've seen it and not even noticed it. How many times do you see people cut their grass because it's, it's getting too tall? Well, that tall is the rejuvenation of the grass that happens when the other aspects of the universe play their role. When the rain comes and when the sun comes out, they play their role. So when the grass grows, it's literally that grass that you see, you don't know how much life that it sustains on how many multiple levels of universe. And that's why the principle is alive for everything that's living. Now, I want you to please call in if you get a chance. Uh, one of the main things I'm trying to get you to understand is we are moving into an area where we must learn to exercise our power in these circumstances. Why? Because we have untapped power that is called the divine universal law. Now, in the Bible, once again, they talked about the major player, Jesus Christ, being living in a state of divineness. Okay? Well, you have to understand that state of divineness is a constantly expansive state. So if you were born in the same image, okay, and you literally can reach a state of divine, because our divinity is available to us. It just requires work by us. You see, it's not handed to us because we don't know the power that it possesses. And it scares the people who want to eliminate you because guess what? You have a greater access to it than they do. Now, I'm going to give you a little clarity on that too. The reason being is because your body can stay in the sun and be recharged, rejuvenated by it. Your body can drink the water and really be filtered, lubricated, and refreshed. And your thir thirst quenched. Now, you're probably saying, well, that happens to, to others also. Yes, but those with lesser melanin do not have the resistance and durability with those that have more melanin. So, the darker you are, the longer that you can be in the sun, it does not bother you at all. And there are some people who literally, their lives are lived in the sun. I mean, they live in places where there are no shade. So therefore, they have the cultural environment teaches them how to survive there and live well full of health, and the best part about it is that everything they do is designed on making the environment more conducive to longevity, and this is what we should be doing with this temple that we have. We should be making it more conducive to longevity, and the sad part about it is a lot of us don't really understand that. But we go out and we do things that are becoming destructive to it, and we play it off, oh, don't bother me. I.e., those who smoke, those who drink, those who live recklessly, those who act recklessly. And see, a lot of times when people say, well, what do you mean? If you look into the depths of the conversation, that you've lived in your life? What the depths of the conversation you live in your life? Friends you may know that have experienced something because they made a mistake or they thought somebody was more gracious or they fell for the, so the gimmick of words. The words are a gimmick. And the reason why words are a gimmick is because they can be manipulated. That's why they are the foundation of laws in this system because they can be manipulated. And how many times have you seen laws rewritten for specific people? So I'm trying to get you to understand this, this picture, as it unfolds, it not only involves you, but there are things you could do in your life that can literally help other people so that they can grow and become more a part of why the universe was designed for us to be here. You know, we're not supposed to be here angry. We're not supposed to be here with any emotional state that controls our lives. 
Why? Because emotions are fleeting. And if you allow emotions to control your life, you will be living on a roller coaster. You must be able to control your emotions so that you can literally add joy to your life whenever you choose because you are in control. One of the things I say to people on a regular basis is I have a joyful day because I control it. I don't look for other people to bring joy to my day. Now, why don't I? Because I try to bring joy to their day. And I understand that what I said earlier about the karma. It comes back around because if I can give someone joy in their day, then they in turn will, or joy in turn, will return to my day. So I think of the things every day that are going to make a difference in how I speak to people and how I would like them to react and how I perceive them, and sometimes how I have to say nothing. Because some people, they live their lives in such a manner that it doesn't make a difference what you say or do. They're going to find something wrong with it. And if that's the case, know them. Because those are the type of people that become energy snatchers. There's other words for them, but I say energy snatchers because every time you come around, they know you're in a good mood and they're going to try to either absorb you or pull you down. And that's neither of what you need. So, when we get into the understanding of how we interact in this multiverse, multiple, uh, multiverse, we must really focus on our introverse first. Because when we can control our introverse, when we can go into states of meditation and heal ourselves, so if you've got a pain in your foot, you can literally break it down and then find the source of the pain and then treat that. You might need just a massage for the moment, but then again, you might need something, a tea or something that will break up that area of your, that blood flow in that area. Blood vessels, they expand and contract. That's what they're designed to do. You see, there's so much going on in your body that you don't know that it's good to know when you do have the ability to go in and you can massage your meridians so that your blood can flow easier. You can focus on your chakras because these are energy centers and open and close them as different parts of your body need it to happen. This is why it is so important for us to begin to grasp the virtue of our true self. Because as you begin to operate and you begin to see the result of your operation, then you become more focused on how you can improve your quality of life through a regular, and it doesn't have to be a rigorous practice. It just has to be consistent. Because the more you improve, the longer it's going to be, your practice is going to become, the more you're going to indulge into your practice. And here's the unique thing. The deeper you go, the more expansive you become. You see, we're only limited in time and space. And we only can operate in the five senses, the five senses in time and space. And when we asleep, we don't have will. So this is what makes meditation so important. Because in meditation, you can self-educate. In meditation, you can literally pick and choose. And most of all, in meditation, you still have your free will. And see, that is a very, very powerful universal principle. And the reason being is because your free will opens the doors for you to decide on this being the time or that being the time. So exposure to different things through metamistic travel is going to open your understanding so that you can be able to operate according to what your needs are. And we must understand it is us, not outside of us, that literally is our first step. Because when you operate inside, then by the time you are willing to open that door to go outside, you are ready to expose other people to the gifts of being a natural human. And the reason why I say a natural human is because right now you're bombarded with everything. 
every every time you turn around. If you go, if you if you get up right now and walk into a room of convers where there's conversation that has nothing to do with you, anything you hear is going to affect your thought process. You know why? Because now your thought process is going to start taking the Western Avenue of literally examining the words, because in Westernism, words have meaning. You see, that's why they were so off when they went to Egypt uh, with these so-called Egyptologists. You know what an Egyptologist is? A person to interpret the truth from what they find. But yet, there's no other Egyptologists that you know. So literally what they were trying to do is control the truth so that you would not know. You see, then they operated in the multiverse all the time. A lot of people say, well, you know, they're, 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 all that technology came from aliens. No, it didn't. It didn't come from aliens. It came from those people who evolved to a level in which they could defeat aliens so they could not land, so they could not have any principle here on this earth. And now you hear about them all the time. You know why? Because that inert nature of us that we were taught during the first eras of humanism as black people have been disconnected from the people we are today through the different transitions, not only of the destruction, and believe me, that was one of the most devastating things that ever happened to black people, because black people worship life. That we were not a warring people. We could be warriors. And wars are way we knew them then were nothing like the devastation that the Europeans brought into play. Some of the wars that were happening down, uh, back then were just uh, arguments of aggression, meaning that they didn't even have verbal. They played drums and did dances and they attacked people from distances so they didn't do harm. And then they would come together and they would converse about what the problem was. And the problem might be access to a river. And then and, and they, uh, they would decide, five miles up the river, you take access to the water. And five miles down the river, we'll take access to the water. See, there's always a logical way to find a solution unless there's something important to induce change. And see, that's what happened with Europeans. They bought things in to induce change. And when you have no concept of compassion and you're dealing with a people who live in the area of virtue and compassion all of their lives, absolutely they were devastated. The sad part about it is that even to this day, we're trying to get back to understanding how we can operate in the multiverse and be able to use the natural tools that are a part of our God given right, and I use the term God right because some people relate that much much more clear, for us to be the principles of providing what the earth needs in order to rejuvenate itself, in order for it to go through its life transition. Because just like the plants, they must go through a death resurrection process also. And the sad part about it is that because you don't see it the way you would think it to be, Westernism wants you to think this is not what happened. But it is what happens with all aspects of living things. Nothing is designed to live forever. It is designed to live a long time. Because the purpose of the principle here on this time and space, and we're energy in time and space. And let me add that real quick because I want people to understand that you have an opportunity to make changes in your life based on what you want to do. And you don't need to go to anybody and say, well, do you need, do I need this? Does this break this law or break that law? Listen, the laws that we live by were universal. I, the, 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 the 42 principles of my art, the first principle of my art is I have not done iniquity. Iniquity means to be destructive in any manner on any level. We get ready to come up on a break. 
I want you all to pick up your phones. I'm trying to give you a lot of information in a short period of time, but every time I hold one of these shows, it's all directed at what you can do in your life to make it better, to expand it, and to move beyond the what is going on outside of you. Because those things are all temporal. They will pass. So this is Brother Davis on a Wise Wednesday. Come on back with me. We'll be waiting for you. Providing new black media for the masses. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, my brothers and sisters. I'm a, I get excited when I get an opportunity to be able to convey to you some of the basic ideas and principles that literally I've learned that are part of who I am through the research I do on not only what I am, but what, what we are and what we should be doing as a people. For those of you who don't know, we are curators. That's right, we are the curators of the earth. And literally, when earth fails, it's not because earth fails itself, it's because of something that we have not done. And you see, the sad part about it is a lot of times we don't know this process because we haven't been exposed to it. So now as I begin to be exposed to it, I begin to be more not only sensitive about it, but aware of the role that I'm supposed to play. And in that role that I'm supposed to play, I have to look at every extension of me. So that means our children, because they're looking to us for us to be able to open doors to them. So the more doors we open and understanding how we operate in the multiverse, the more doors we can show them and they become operators at an earlier age. So by the time they reach older years, they are experienced enough to be able to open a greater amount of doors because the universe is limitless. So when you leave this plane, you are not contained by the so-called physiological laws that operate here. So what does that mean? That means that if you wanted to move through dimensions with thought, you don't have to physically move out of your body. That's a powerful statement. If you want to move to other dimensions through thought, you don't have to literally have more than one body because you are tapping into principles that allow you to do what you have been brought here for. But that until we grow to understand how we achieve these things, we victimize ourselves by doing what we have already seen to be comfortable for us. What is comfortable for us? Well, you know, people got a routine. They get up in the morning. How many of you go to bed at night and leave your TVs on? See? When you do that, you allow your mind to be bombarded with a lot of things that you have no control over, and some of them you'll wake up with a headache with and not realize 
that it may become something as simple as not putting the timer on the TV set or turning the TV set off, period. Because when you turn the TV set off, period, you can put yourself in a place that is so quiet, you can hear your body communicating with you. But we're not taught these things. We have to teach ourselves these things. And when we do and start to benefit by it, then we really start to get on a fast track because now we're speaking those things that are going to enhance our ability to achieve a greater knowledge to find out what is my limitation. You see, one thing about limits, when you know a limit, you don't go past it. You know, like, you know, the city limits, you know, the state boundaries, they always put up limits. Because in time and space, they want you to feel as though you are in you are in a controlled area. Okay, the only thing, and this is not, I want to make this very clear. This is immoral, and the reason why they do it is because they want you to examine yourself in the most negative light. Okay, but they want you to act and achieve different heights of physical pleasure by doing things that may be beyond your limits, your natural limits. So therefore, they're starting to indoctrinate you and exposing you to some of these things that really don't serve a principle in your life, but in order to keep you away from the virtue of growth, they have to make sure that you have been so mentally demeaned that you don't think you have a right. But in reality, it makes no difference what is in your past when you wake up. Remember what I said about wisdom. Wisdom is knowing when to apply the knowledge that is suitable for your circumstance. Because knowledge is, they, they tell you knowledge is power, but knowledge is nothing but data. And there's data everywhere. And some people are good with data, some people are not good with data. So in really, for you to be approaching of age where you can know what you're doing is when you have done it before so much that it becomes second nature. And see, that's why we must open these doors so that we can move through these universes and begin to understand that it's not just one. We live in a multiverse. Your genes in your body is a different universe than your cells. Your cells in your body is a different universe than the, the protons and the neutrons. It, but they all work in conjunction because the design is perfect. Let me say that again. They all work in conjunction because the design is perfect. What makes it imperfect is man. Because he's always trying to do something. Although he doesn't know half the time what he's doing. Most of his science is based on what is called pseudoscience, which means that they used an experiment based on the knowledge that they have to achieve the answer for the result of the analyzation. So that means they got to try a test with it to see if it does something. And whatever is at the end of that test, then they can go ahead and record that and say to you, this has been tested. We know this works. But that is what's called a pseudoscience. What you are stepping into is what's called life force exercise. Because your life force is beginning to exercise in areas it never has before. And your life force is ready because literally you have wasted a lot of your life force. We all have. We have been brought up under Westernism that teaches us the deception of time is not, uh, it's not yours, it's theirs. So as long as they keep you deceived, they can use you. I'm going to give you a perfect example. Brother Dave talked about taxes. Do you know there's no tax law? Hey, I'm get that minute ticket. There's no tax law. There's nothing that says you have to pay taxes on your working income. Nothing. But yet, there are laws designed to lock you up if you don't pay taxes on your income. But yet, 
<laughs> this is what I'm saying about the deception. There is no tax law. Uh, I read an um, article about a lady who worked for, I can't even think of her name, Sherry something. She worked for the Internal Revenue Service. But this is a sidebar. So they told her that she had to do audits on all these different people, and she came in and she said, you know, I threw my badge down, and that badge was the authority, and I can make them do anything I want to make them do. She said, so one night she was sitting back and kicking back in the kitchen, and her girlfriend called her up and said, you know what? There's no such thing as a tax law. Oh, she said, oh, yes, there is. I work for the IRS. She said, well, there's a man that's saying if you could show him a tax law, he'll give $50,000 to anybody who could show him a tax law in print. Well, she said, well, I work for the IRS. That, that should be easy money. So she started looking and searching and looking and searching. And she went to her supervisor. And she says, you know, um, I was just curious because people were asking me, where is the tax law written? And the supervisor told her, that is not the purpose of what you do. The purpose of what you do is an audit to make sure they pay tax. She said, well, that kind of made me wonder. Why would they focus on my job and not answer my question? And she said, over a period of the next year or so, she found out there was no tax law. So then she began to realize that all of these people that she was bringing serious trouble down on based on what she thought was good law was based on a concept. It had nothing to do with law. So she said when she got into it, she began to realize that when Andrew Jackson, was it Andrew Jackson? I'm not quite sure. 1917, let me say that. In 1917, there was a president running for office, but... There was no what's called third-party banking system in America. So that meant the American government printed its own money, all right? So these people came to this president and represented themselves as the Federal Reserve Service. They didn't call themselves that. They called them. They were just a group of men, rich men, who wanted to make sure he got in the office if he would do them a favor. And he said, well, he wanted this presidency so bad, what was the favor? He said, all you got to do is write an act called the Federal Reserve Act. Well, he's not having the knowledge of being able to look into what the Federal Reserve Act is. He was he got the presidency because they paid to put the money out there. You have to understand, money is also a tool. They put the money out there. He got the presidency, and he wrote into the law the Federal Reserve Act. And so there's a subsequent title in there of the Federal Reserve Act called the Internal Revenue Service, and what they were designed to do was to collect taxes. Well. This is a private bankers imposing themselves on the American public in order to enrich themselves. So therefore, to this day, this service has become more powerful than the federal government. The Federal Reserve makes money at will. And here's the interesting part. They charge you for it. Yes. You look at every dollar. You heard Eric Brother Day say that currency don't mean nothing. Every dollar, that's, that's not money. That is literally a debt note. And on that debt, that means there's a debt, and you pay the debt for that note. Okay, that was a sidebar. I just wanted to show you how plethora, how horrific deception is in the American system. And that's just only one way, okay? Getting back to understanding how we can utilize our internal growth process in order to move through different universes and not be stuck in this so-called time and space is because that is your birthright. But you have to do the things that are necessary for you to achieve the strength as well as the lessons along the way. Because, see, if a person gave you a gun and said, here, and you looked at it and you didn't know whether it was loaded or not, how would you know? There's a process that you have to go through in order to know. And see, that is why it's so important that we go through this process so that we can tap into all of these universes and restore ourselves to our proper position. Because, see, they know. They all know. They see, they 
pulled all of the information out of the great libraries of Kemet, out of Alexander, out of all of the, the great cities of Africa. Those libraries were the first initial writings of, of civilization. Now, here's what they didn't or they overlooked. They didn't know what was written in the walls of the pyramids. You know why? Because they were looking for words, and all they were seeing was symbols. They were coming with a theological concept of words when it was based, the writing was based on the theological concept of sound and vibration. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is, to me, it's so funny now that I'm beginning to grasp all of this and I can share it with you because now you could see with clarity why they only selected Ten Commandments when they came up with their concept of religion. Because if they would have accepted any more, they could not make money. If they would have accepted any more, they would have realized that the death and destruction that they were doing were going to come back to them in some manner. So therefore, when they decided to control these spiritual people, they gave them just enough to keep them in control. And in doing so, over years and years, those who didn't want to conform, they killed. Millions they killed. This is not an easy process. And no, I want you to see this as being a gentle process. I want you to understand the reason why they don't want you to know this is because they could not control you with some type of knowledge. When you get into a, meta, a, a, a spiritual state and you're moving and doing things in other areas and you're making changes that are going to directly affect what they're trying to achieve, you've taken the fear that they want to place on you and you shook it off like dust because it can't affect you. Here's the, here's, here's the most powerful part. They don't know who you are. That's right. If I uh, say if 50 people who hear this here, say there's 500, listen, 10% of you guys, if you're serious about your growth, you go ahead and you really start focusing on your uh, mediumistic practices, and then you begin to understand the importance of the connection, and when you begin to really take off, and you begin to see about the other dimensions of which you can travel, and then you begin to realize, I'm lifting myself out of my present state of, of what they call humanism, and I'm moving into my state of, some people call it etheric travel, some people call it astral travel, but it's elevating to another level of the multiverse. And now you're opening doors for those secrets, those secrets that they still haven't figured out. Oh, you heard them. Oh, this is how the pyramid was there. We're only speculating because we really don't know. Now they're finding pyramids all over the world. You know what that tells them? Now, this is, this is powerful. That tells them that the people who created the first pyramids that they had record of built them all over the world. So that meant that they had the ability to travel all over the world and build relationships with people in other countries that they are just beginning to open that door and they don't want the truth out. You see, that's why a whole lot of people in the United States, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the people in the United States don't know there are pyramids right here. That's right. There are pyramids right here in America. That's why they don't want the Mexicans for years. Which, oh, no, we did not come from black people until the OMAC heads were discovered. Now, for you who don't know what the OMAC heads are, please do a little do research. You'll find that the OMAC heads are what were what on the island, on the land of Mexico. There are these heads that look like they were above ground. They were sitting on the sand. Okay. Now science has proved that there's statues that are about 30 to 40 feet tall, and the heads that you see is only a portion of what, is, what the true structure of the statue is. So therefore, now that tells you that for at least 100 years, they had been there, made their stake on that land in Mexico, and the indigenous people embraced them enough 
to put these statues up to welcome them or to let anybody who comes identify the fact that they have been welcomed by these. You see, there's a lot of powerful things that are going on here. And if we are not going to open ourselves up so that we can attain, attain the truth about them, then they're going to continually give us their story. Well, you know, these the pyramids were built by aliens, yes. Now, how do you know they were built by aliens? Because there's a, the cornerstone. The cornerstone is almost absolutely perfect. Like, you couldn't do that? Can humans do that? Well, humans would make a slight variation. Why? Because they don't want you to know the perfect process that was initiated by the Creator in putting the first on this earth. They were chosen for a purpose. And all of the descendants of the chosen still maintain the gifts of the birthright. And these gifts are what is really the great fear. And that's why you see the shootings in the streets by people who don't even live in your neighborhood. Don't even look like you. And then when you ask, do you remember the guy down in Florida who got shot? And he said to the police officer, I'm laying on the ground. I got my hands up. And you shot me. And why did you shoot me? And the police officer said, I don't know. And guess what? That was an acceptable excuse. We have to take the responsibility of our birthright back. And then we must take it serious. And we must restore the true virtue to who we are as a people. Because if we do not, there is no question that these people are going to kill you. They're still in your organs. They're redesigning their bodies behind yours. And believe this or not, it may not be on your doorstep today, but it is coming. All of these things they're doing now with the chemicals and the food and all of that, wake up! That's to subdue you. If you're sick, you can never focus on what you need to do in order to make you perform more according to your birthright. Because when you perform more according to your birthright, you can engineer the cosmos. And when you engineer the cosmos, a lot of the stuff that they're doing cannot be done. I mean... Imagine you having the ability to stop the destruction without confrontation. Because that's what it comes down to. When you reach the fullness of the cycle, you are not them. And they are not you. And whatever the solution that comes out of the growth of us as a people, it will not be a destructive solution the way they have sought, because we are not them. And we cannot take the trash that they've dumped in our minds and develop into spiritual people carrying it. No. No, 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 no. We have to systematically, and I've said this before, we have to systematically remove it. How do you do that? You take the positive enrich the, the 42 principles and you meditate on the 42 principles and then you state the meditation you recite those principles so that they become alive you're planting a seed into your subconscious to bring a great plant to life and as they become alive your transformation is in full swing so when you're starting to take your courses and of growth in your metamistic practices and you start doing the foundational things what are foundational things well, first of all, you don't eat any food that's processed. I know that's a sweeping statement. And you don't have to do it overnight. Just take your time and ease yourself away from it. Because processed food always has something in it to throw your body out of whack. And you may not even realize it. I mean, how many, how many people heard the, give me a super size, give me that extra value meal. See, they know all of the gimmicks because they have programmed you in a system that they want to work for them. And for those of you who don't know, they want to kill one. Of, they want to kill uh, six out of seven of y'all in a period of time. 
that's what my wife was telling me when she was telling me about the Georgia Guidestones. They wrote it. This is a diabolical plan by a people that don't have any right to have authority over you. Now, they manipulated, they, they, they manipulated us real well. Because guess what? At the end of their word was a gun. And I'll just kill you. If you don't do what I say, I'll just kill you. Well, guess what? A lot of our ancestors said, well, you said, if that's the result, then kill me. You know why? Because they knew they were energy. They knew that they would go through the transformation process. Did they run to it? Absolutely not. Because understand what I said, here is a principal base of growth. Here, we serve nature, we serve man, and we serve the universe simultaneously. And the harmony was unbelievable prior to the change. For 6,000 years, the harmony was in balance. But now you know the world is out of balance. And it's going to remain that way until we rise. But when I say we rise, I don't think, I'm not telling you everybody's going to get through this. No. There's somebody listening to us here tonight who literally is going to give a report about what I say. And that might terrify some of y'all. Because guess what? When you start doing, and you start operating, and this stuff starts coming true, they don't know you. But great leaders have gone before you and given their life up to save something exclusively for you. And we're going to have to go through something to prepare ourselves to receive that knowledge and understand this. We also have to divide to decide the purpose and the proper time. Because nothing comes easy. Nothing. But this the simplicity is really what I want you to see. That it's available to us. That it simply requires something of us to open that door so that we can get the information they have for us. Others have been there, but they weren't the ones. What do I mean by that? I mean, it's the, Indian, the uh, Indians have been practicing uh, meditation for years and years. Why? Because Africans bought it. Yeah. There's a group of Africans called uh, the the Davidian, the the Davidians. Look it up. They're black. They're black. They're black Indians, and they bought meditation yoga into India and into Asia. And for those of you who don't know, there's a, a Chinese proverb that every great master of the martial arts has to have some black blood in them. And in Japan, it's every great uh, samurai had to have some black blood in them. Well, they're not saying that to make black people feel good. They're saying that because they know black people are there. It's on the, the, Wherever we've been, our people are still there. They just don't put them on the front page. But if you go to India, there's black people in India. You go to China, there's black people in China. Because guess what? They made it with us also. Why? They made it with us because they wanted to maintain or attain some of that power and that superiority that came with the color of melanin. And they didn't know why. They just knew that having a part of beats having none of. Because, see, we, we, didn't, we didn't go to people's lands with guns telling them we're going to take this and we're going to take that and you got to follow our laws. No, that wasn't how we did business because that would upset the harmony of the universe. You see, our, our presence and our person have always been spiritual. This is one of the reasons why religion has become such a, a, a powerful tool. And please, those people who are religious, don't get upset with me. Just do a little due diligence beyond the Bible. The reason why I say the beyond the Bible is because they know if they keep you thoroughly in control, that you won't open any doors that's going to expose the truth to you. I was you. Let me repeat that. I was you. But as the doors well, begin to open and I begin to expand, I ran with it. 
Okay, we should be coming up on another break any time now, Brother Scotty. So no, you still got... Ladies and gentlemen, uh, brothers and sisters, please. Okay, you, go ahead. You still have six minutes. I just wanted to make a point about religion. Don't get offended uh, when somebody po- talks about your religion. Think of religion as as uh, rituals, basically rituals that are made... Uh, that are that have been created to get the masses to conform to people and not to the religious or the spiritual uh, teachings uh, that they supposed to be representing. That's the way I look at religion as being ritualistic, meaning I'm just doing this repetitive action, and there's really you know no power behind that repetitive action. I'm just doing it because it's expected of me to do because they always have done it this way and that's not the same thing as the spirit practicing the spiritual principles of the universe which can be found in many different texts that that people will call them religious texts but that's how i i look at it that a religion and i don't do organized religion because it's nothing but a bunch of rituals that's not going to benefit me Excellent. And you know, one of, the, one of the differences between a religion requires group. Spirituality doesn't require a group. Spirituality requires incentives. All you have to do is they have the incentive to learn. When you open that door to little things, the other things will come to you. See, that's why you've always heard me say, I don't teach. I help people find their path. And as they find their path, I let them go because I know, according to the universal principles, those things will be added unto them so they can find where they're trying to achieve. Because we all come with gifts, and my gift may not be what's functioning in your And then to give you an idea, a lot of people uh, say that the pyramids were built by pushing these big boulders, and they broke them down by chisels and that sort of thing into certain sizes, and then they placed them, and then they turned around and said, well, the weight of those boulders is impossible. Well, you know why? Because they didn't do it that way. They levitated them. They lift them off the ground with their minds. They moved them to where they wanted. They, they, they shaved them and cut them the sizes that they wanted. Now, they might have certain people who had certain tools in this process. I'm not saying there was no tools at all. I'm saying that I did this operating in the gifts of the spirit the spiritual nature that we all can tap into. But we may not realize what our gift is until we get there. That's why I say I don't lead people. Your family might be a group of levitators or your family might be the group of sound vibrators. And see, the sad part about it is that people do not understand these things because they sought them with the wrong theories in mind. That's why sound and vibration is such a powerful tool in every aspect of achievement when it comes to the physical body. Because literally, they tap into what's called the electromagnetic rhythm, and these rhythms literally are moving through your body and maintaining the body's rhythm of the heartbeat, the pulse, the structure of the body and the joint movement, all of these require a certain degree of balance and rhythm to work. That's why it's so important that we learn to be able to go inside ourselves so that we can bring correction, how to massage our chakras, how to go to the meridians that are backed up and expand the vessels to the point where they can relax. How do you do that? Some people do it with a simple massage. That's why you got so many. You ever look at a reflexology chart and you see all of those points that represent different parts of the body? That's because of years and years of study and this wisdom was written down. And once you learn how to apply that wisdom, then that chart literally is a roadmap to you to bring healing to the body. Now they have them. I know they have them with the hands, they have them with the feet, they have them with the face. We are not what we were told. We are greater than that. We are eating a lot of things that are leading to our destruction, and we are greater than that. 
And the sad point about this, and this is really going to this blew my mind. In the United States, one of the biggest problems that we as people of color have is high blood pressure and diabetes. But you'd realize that in Africa, it's almost impossible. There's no record. The, 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 this is what I'm saying. The blood pressure and diabetes is almost mute. So don't you don't believe that stuff when people say, "Oh, that's that's a uh, hereditary." No, it's not. We have to examine the fact that somebody's putting something in what we eat and drinking. So now we got to be more focused on being virtuous about that. And I keep coming back to virtue because literally, that's being honest with yourself. When you're honest with yourself, because the system teaches us, it teaches us. To lie to ourselves. Now, let me clear that up real quick because I know some people are guessing. But when you can make an excuse and that excuse is acceptable, then it becomes easier to make an excuse. And that next excuse becomes acceptable. But that give the word excuse so that you will accept it. But in reality, it's a lie and you have accepted the lie that you told to yourself. So let's come to the reality of truth today about words in America. This is Brother Davis on a Wise Wednesday. We'll be right back. Give me some calls, y'all. For podcasts and live program scheduling, visit us on the web at blacktalkradionetwork.com. All right, we're back, we're back, we're back. Now, the the importance of this, of what I'm doing tonight, and I, I constantly go back to this because I have to get you to see it, is our children. You see, as long as we continue to do what they call to tell a little white lie or I got a headache today and your child is seeing that, that's acceptable. So you, how can you teach your child a virtue when you're operating in something that the child sees you so often do? Excuse me, on several levels. So it's our it's our. It's our principle to be able to be virtuous with ourselves so that in doing so, when we speak of virtue to our children, they will understand it and not be confused. See, the reason why you don't hear the word virtue a lot is because they don't want you to be virtuous. It's that simple. That means, once again, that you are going to do something that's going to make or help you become better. And when you deal with it on a spiritual level, you have studied, you have built in an obligation for yourself to do this. And as long as you stay on that road, it gets easier and easier. That's like a, that's like a marriage. You take a marriage three first three to five years, that's rough. Because they may not know how to deal with temptation. They may not know how to deal with uh, having the ability to have money to do what they, whatever they want to do. Because there's always somebody out here that's a victim of money and will do things for it. So that, that, that if they're making money, they get some power. So if they're weak, they can manipulate that person because they got money. That's why drugs are in our community, so that they can manipulate you and get you hooked so that someone who sees you getting high, walking around, smiling and everything, they don't see you when you're down. They don't see you when you're in a ditch. They don't see you when you're hurt. They don't see you when you're in pain. There's a reason why they're doing what they're doing, and we have to be principled and virtuous enough to rise. Everybody has a calling on them, whether you be a mother, father, sister, brother. you got a calling on you. And that means that you are going to be an example to someone. 
you may not know that you're an example of that person. But if you are operating in a virtuous manner, it doesn't make a difference. I've had people walk up to me and say, brother, you know what, man? If it wasn't for you um, at that particular time and you told me that I, and I started opening that door, man, that changed my life. All I could do is smile and say, well, thank you, brother. I was glad I was there for you. Because I don't know when people are operating in things that are going to help them become better at what they're trying to achieve. And I don't need to know. Because my reward is having opportunities like this to get on the radio to whatever he li- he- ear that hears I be heard because in doing so you're going to look out beyond the lesson and you're going to dabble first then you will grow because see this is all seed what I'm spitting out is all seed and see seed to fall on good ground and fall on bad ground just get caught in the wind and blow for two or three years and then all of a sudden it grows into a ripe vine or plant somewhere else. But we have to understand the importance of what we do, why we do, so that we can maintain the course of achieving it. Because listen, if we don't change, they're going to, next week there's going to be other people killed. Yes, they're, they're, listen, brothers and sisters, you see what we're playing. They are not playing. They'll, they make laws now designed on their right to kill you. And guess what? When they pass them, they expect you to obey the laws that are designed to kill you. It's sad that their mentality is on such a low, low level. And they think, they think that they're doing this to protect themselves. They're not doing this to protect themselves. They're doing this because of their fear of you. You have never been as as destructive as they have been. No man on earth. No, 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 none. There's no man on earth that has ever been as destructive as the wild, the lost. And believe me, he knows it. That's why he changes it around. When you see on TV and there's, there's drug busters, who are they locking up? They're locking up black people. If somebody got raped, who got raped? They locking up black people. When they can put the most salacious story about black people on that thing, they do. And there's white people doing stuff that's more horrific. But if you don't know it, they ain't telling you. Believe me, if they could get by without saying they was white, they would. That's why they don't say it. Check a news program. Check out a news program where they, when this black person, they'll say African American, but when they white people, they don't say who they are. You know why? Because they want you to think they're somebody other than white. Until they put that picture up there, and in most cases, if they can avoid it, they won't even put that picture up there because that is the illusion of Westernism. See, they tell you to follow the Ten Commandments, but they don't follow them. We must wake up, brothers and sisters. Our time is coming. A lot of people say, well, well, in the meantime, we die. We've been dying here at their hand for a long time. And their time is coming. And when their time comes, if we practice these principles, we'll be here because guess what? What's going to happen in a manner that they will never know it's coming. Never. You know why? Because they think that they understand every principle but they're not spiritual people so how can they understand the things of the spirit all we know is that we cannot aggravate any power against them in a negative manner so even if you do attain a certain degree of power you can't go out and kill one of them exercising that because as you do you are operating outside of the principles of my art and you condemn yourself I hope y'all are getting there. Because I'm going to tell you something. It will not be anywhere, way, form like you think it's going to be. And guess what? They don't think it will ever happen. So that's one for them and one for y'all. Now let me explain that. 
One for them, because they don't think it'll ever happen. And one for y'all, because you know, according to universal principle, it will. But we got to get busy on our part. We got to start making our practices known. We got to start doing our practices so our children can walk in on us. And so my, what my wife does when my grandchildren walk in, she'll pull them aside. And, well, what's Papa? Because Papa's meditating. Sometimes I'm meditating with them. See, the whole thing is that we are setting the example so that as they begin to grow and they begin to operate in their own spiritual nature, that we can teach them what we have learned while we're here, give them the instruments that we use to get to the point where we have reached a growth, where we have become perpetual, so that they will reach that growth at an earlier age, become more a greater perpetual at a younger age, and be able to do and achieve what we could not because we couldn't go that deep. Because I'm going to tell you something. It's a multiverse. Not a universe. And then, you know, my wife, when she first brought that to my attention, because, you know, you get in that conversation, uh, husband and wife, and she said, well, you know, baby, you got to start using the concept of uni when then you know there's more than one universe. It's, there's one, one verse. It's a multiverse. You have the plants as a universe, the insects as a universe, the animals as a universe, the body as a universe. I mean, she, she made these things clear to me through general conversation. When I started doing my research, and I'm coming back, baby, do you realize? And she said, well, not that, but I can believe it. Let me give you a little, a little, a little insight of heavy knowledge. For those people who are spiritual, you talk about Jesus Christ was supposed to be the divine one, and that no one could go before the Father unless they go through him. Well, here's the, the real deal. Divinity is a part of our birthright. We have to work to achieve it, but it's a part of our birthright. So now if this God that they talk so much and could do so much did it, and we have a right to the same divinity, he had to move to multiple universes. So that means that we tap into the same connection. I'm only trying to show you how they only show, give you a part of the story in order to keep you focused where they want you to be focused. But I'm telling you that in my travels and my experience with my meditation and my studies and like the people I'm running across, it's phenomenal. It is really, truly phenomenal. I have friends that I have met just by chance that have taken me into levels of meditation that literally has meditated with people who have meditated, oh, almost 100 years. I have been in places where there were many people who have been, if you added all of the years of meditation up, I'm meditating with over 500 years of meditating experience in that hour. And then there are times where I can be someplace where there may be 10 or 15,000 years of meditating experience depending on the number of people and how many years they've been doing this. But see, they're not all meditating to achieve the same thing. What if they were, though? Ooh. <laughs> so, my brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm really trying to point out to you that at this stage of the game, we have been nulled into a state of restlessness, agitation, and we have to get to a lucid state. Remember what I told you about the dullness, the agitated state, and the lucid state? The lucid state is when you can sit down, put your plan together, and work your plan, and stay focused. So that's the virtue of a plan. When you can sit down, work the plan, and stay focused. These are the virtues that we must apply to for us to be able to get out of the social dysfunctional state that we are in that we never designed for ourselves, nor are we comfortable in it. That's why you hear them use the term crabs in a barrel. You know why they use that term? Because crabs are in an unnatural place in a barrel. But you put them in their natural development, in their natural habitat, there'll be crabs all over the place don't even bother each other. You know why? Because that's their natural habitat. 
But we got to get out the barrel, y'all. Stop letting them tell us that we're constantly pulling each other down. No, we're not. We have been put in a state of rest that we must break out of. And there's reasons for that. And I really won't go into them, but I'm going to tell you, there's a plethora of things that's going on. <laughs> Excuse me. And they're programming us to stay there. So don't think you're alone. This is Brother Davis on a wise Wednesday. Let me turn it back over to you, Scotty. But please, hit me up next week and we can go further into the subject matter. Well, actually, before you go, you do have a call. Um, I didn't see Brother this. Brother Davis, thank you so much. Uh, um, I missed. I was trying to get back on. Um, I missed a, a lot of the show, but I know it was going uh, to be great. So Dave, um, I, I think he has a call. call back. Yeah, go ahead. I think he actually has a call, Brother Davis, before you go. Yeah, um, Brother Davis, I think you got a call uh, just yeah. sort of out of Pennsylvania. If we got time, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, we got time. Eric two two one five. You're, you're on with Brother Davis. What is your question and comment, and what is your name? Hey, hey Brother Davis. My name is uh, Seymour. I'm calling out of San Diego. I didn't really hey, have brother. a question. I just wanted to comment. Uh, you know, thank you for not just this episode, but episodes in the past. I know, well, me personally, I work in a very noisy area, so I can't always call in, much less listen. And uh, today was one of those days where I didn't get a chance to hear the uh, beginning of the episode, so I'll have to come back and check for that. But I did catch the majority of the last um, half hour. And, uh, yeah, I, mean, I just want you to know that if no one else says it, personally, I appreciate you. And that was my comment. I'm humble, brother, and thank you for taking the time to listen to me. Man, Brother Davis, we we, we yeah. all appreciate you so much, so, so much. So is anyone else like to get in on the conversation? Uh, now's the time to do it. Uh, we have a, a couple of minutes before uh, we're going to have the next show with uh, Scotty and Max. The New Abolition Radio Show come, uh, New, Aboli- New Abolition Radio Show comes on right after Tando Radio Show. Max is already there, ready in queue. Scotty's here, so if you'd like to get in, give us a call eight six six five one zero ninety twenty five eight six six five one zero ninety twenty five. Since we got a show coming on right after us, you need to come on right now in order to do that because we don't we want to have them time to set up for the next show. So. Okay, everyone, just want to thank you all. Um, tomorrow is born day, um, so uh, Wifey's got some plans, and so I'm going to miss him. Um, probably uh, it's, it's going to be a little surprise and going to go a couple of places, so I uh, may miss a Friday as well. So I will well, let you know. I won't talk to you tomorrow, um, And if I do, babe. I'll probably shoot a show early in the morning that will be pre-recorded uh, for Friday. I'm not quite sure. So, all right, everyone. Listen up. Um, it's never Listen, Dave. Day. It's Dave, always... happy born day, yes, man. Sir. If I don't talk to you tomorrow or Friday, thank you, brother. Happy I birthday, my you. brother. Happy birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Get fifty is no joke, but you know, um, I, I love this time of year not because of my birthday, but because uh, brother, brother Malcolm's birthday was the one day I was like, man, you could hold hold me in the belly one more day. Man, much love, much respect. But wait, wait, I think we got a uh, caller there. Thank you, Max. Thank you, brother. Uh, I, oh, I messed up. I'm, not, um, I'm actually 49. I'm, I'm, I put myself a little early there. So, But it feels like 50. But thank you, brother. Um, we got a, a caller out of Charlotte. Real quickly, you have a question or comment for Brother Davis? You got to do it real quick. Yes, Brother um, Davis, thank you so much. This is Yvette calling. Um, oh, hey, just- sister. Yes, happy Breathe Day to you, um, Brother Dave. But, Brother Davis, thank you so much for just reiterating how we've been indoctrinated to believe that everything is the truth was paganistic, when actually what they were schooling was just all lies. And from everything from astrology to being in touch with yourself is the truth. But we've been taught to believe that it was a lie. So thank you so much for that, and um, hope to hear more. Thank you for listening, Sister Hotel. Peace. Much love. That's, that's my sister. Hey, sister, give me a call. I haven't talked to you in a little bit. Okay, everyone.
<laughs> Charlie said, 50 don't feel no different than 49 to me. <laughs> All right, everyone, much love, much respect. And it's never goodbyes. As always, we'll see you later. And before you ask for a fortune, make sure to give one away. Well, we got um, New Abolition Radio coming on with Max and, and uh, Scotty right after here, Brother Bragg. If you would, if you would chime us out, much love, much respect. I'll talk to you all soon. Peace. Hello. Hey, look, I'm in the car, man. I'm sorry about that. Gold dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We slicing cake. We slicing cake. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. It's happened before. In 2000, Saddam Hussein announced Iraqi oil would be traded in euros, not dollars. Sanctions and an invasion followed. Some say because the Americans were desperate to prevent OPEC from transferring oil trading in all its member countries to the euro. Not the case in places like Libya and many of the Gulf states. A gold dinar would have given oil-rich African and Middle Eastern countries the power to turn around to their energy-hungry customers and say, sorry, the price has gone up and we want gold. The United States should welcome the self-determination of Africans. They certainly have denied self-determination to Africans inside the United States, so we're not surprised by anything that the United States would do. Gaddafi uh, had an intent to try to uh, reprice his oil or whatever else the uh, the country was uh, selling in the global markets and accept something else as a currency or maybe launch a gold in our currency. Any move such as that would certainly not be welcomed by the power elite today who are responsible for controlling the world's central banks. So yes, that would certainly be something that would cause his immediate dismissal. And the-